Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com Eros and Psyche by Robert Bridges Part 6 August When from the lowest ebbing of her blood The fluttering pulses thrilled and swelled again A stricken heart recovering forced to flood With life the sunken conduits of her brain Then Psyche, where she had fallen, numb and cold, arose but scarce her quaking sense controlled seeing the couch where she that night had lain the level sunbeams searched the grassy ground for diamond dewdrops ah was this the place where was the court her home she looked around and questioned with her memory for a space there was the cypress there the well-known wood that walled the spot twas here her palace stood as surely as twas vanished without trace it was all a dream to think that all was dreamt were now the happier thought but arguing over that dream it was she fell from her attempt feeling the wifely burden that she bore nay true twas true she had had all and lost the joy the reckless wrong the heavy cost were hers the dead end now and woe in store what to be done fainting and shelterless upon the mountain it were death to bide and harbour none she knew where her distress might comfort find or love's dishonour hide nor felt she any dread like that of home yet forth she must albeit to row and roam an outcast over the country far and wide anon she marvelled noting from the vale a path lead downward to the plain below crossing the very site whereon the pale of all her joy had stood few hours ago a run of mountain beasts that keep their track through generations and for ages back had trod the self-same footing to and fro that would she try so forth she took her way turning her face from the dishonoured dell adown the broadening eastward lawns which lay in gentle slant till suddenly they fell in sheer cliff whence the path that went around clomb by the bluffs or ever it downward wound beneath the precipice impassable there once she turned and gazing up the slope she bid the scene of all her joy adieu ay and farewell she cried farewell to hope since there is none will rescue me anew who have killed god's perfection with a doubt which said she took the path that led about and hid the upward pleasance from her view but soon it left her entering neath the shade of cedar old and russeted tall pine whose mighty tops seen from the thorny glade belted the hills about and now no sign had she to guide her save the slow descent but swiftly over the springy floor she went and drew the odorous air like draughts of wine then next she passed a forest thick and dark with heavy elixirs and plantains high and came to long lush grass and now could mark by many a token that the plain was nigh when lo a river to whose bank at last being come upon the bank her limbs she cast and through her sad tears watched the stream go by and now the thought came over her that in death there was a cure for sorrow that before her eyes ran lethe she might take one breath of water and be freed for evermore leaning to look into her tomb thereon she saw the horror of her image wan and up she rose at height to leap from shore when suddenly a mighty voice that fell with fury on her ears there sense to scare that bounding from the tree trunks like the yell of a hundred brazen trumpets cried forbear forbear fond maid that forward step to take for life can cure the ills that love may make but for the harm of death is no repair then looking up she saw an uncouth form perched on the further bank whose parted lips volleyed their friendly warning in a storm a man he might have been but for the tips of horns appearing from his shaggy head for over his matted beard his face was red and all his shape was manlike to the hips in forehead low keen eye and nostril flat he bore the human grace in mean degree but set beneath his body squat and fat legs like a goat's and from the hairy knee the shank fell spare and though crosswise he put his limbs in easeful posture for the foot the beast's divided hoof was plain to see him then she knew the mighty choric god the great hill haunting and tree loving pan whom zeus had laughed to see when first he trod olympus neither god nor beast nor man who every rocky peak and snowy crest of the aspen mountains for his own possessed and all their alps with bacchic rout overran 
whom when his pipe he plays on loud and sweet and over the fitted reeds his moist lip flees around in measured step with nimble feet water nymphs dance and hammer dryades and all the woodlands airy folk who shun man's presence to his frolic pastime run from their perennial wells and sacred trees now on his knee his pipe laid by he spoke with flippant tongue wounding unwittingly the heart he sought to cheer with jest and joke and what hast thou to do with misery he said who hast such beauty as might gain the love of eros cast away thy pain and give thy soul to mirth and jollity thy mortal life is but a brittle vase but as thee list with wine or tears to fill for all the drops therein are o's and r's of joy or grief according to thy will and wouldst thou learn of me my merry way i'd teach thee change thy lover every day and prize the cup that thou wert fain to spill nay if thou plunge thou shalt not drown nor sink for i will to thee over the stream afloat and bear thee safe and oh i know a drink for care that makes sweet music in the throat come live with me my love i'll cure thy chance for i can laugh and quaff and pipe and dance swim like a fish and caper like a goat speaking his brute divinity explored the secret of her silence and old pan grew kind and told her of a shallow ford where lower down the stream over pebbles ran and one might pass at ease with ankles dry whither she went and crossing over thereby her lonely wanderings through the isle began but none could tell no nor herself had told where food she found or shelter through the land by day or night until by fate controlled she came by steep ways to the southern strand where sacred to the twins and britomart pent in its rocky theatre apart a little town stood on the level sand twas where her younger sister's husband reigned and psyche to the palace gate drew near helplessly still by eros hest constrained and knocking begged to see her sister dear but when in state stepped down that haughty queen and saw the wan face spent with tears and teen she smiled and said psyche what dost thou here then psyche told how having well employed their means and done their bidding not amiss looking on him her hand would have destroyed twas eros whom in love leaning to kiss even as she kissed a drop of burning oil fallen from the lamp had served her scheme to foil discovering her in vision of her bliss wherewith the god stung like a startled bird arose in air and she fell back in swoon but ere he parted said she he conferred on thee the irrecoverable boon by prime lost to me go tell he said thy sister that i love her in thy stead and bid her by her love haste hither soon which when that heart of malice heard it took the jealous fancy of her silly lust and pitilessly with triumphant look she drank the flattery and gave full trust and leaving psyche ere she more could tell ran off to bid her spouse for aye farewell and in his ear this ready lie she thrust my dearest sister psyche she whose fate we mourned hath reappeared alive and hale but brings sad news my father dies full late these tidings come but love may yet avail let me be gone and stealing blind consent forth on that well-remembered road she went and climbed upon the peak above the dale here on the topmost rock where psyche first had by her weeping sire been left to die she stood a moment in her hope accursed being happy and the cliffs took up her cry with chuckling mockery from her tongue above zepha sweet zepha waft me to my love and off she leapt upon his wings to fly but as a dead stone from a height let fall silent and straight is gathered by the force of earth's vast mass upon its weight so small in speed increasing as it nears its source of motion by which law all things soever are clutched and dragged and held so fell she there like a dead stone down in her headlong course the disregardful silence heard her strike upon the solid crags her dismal shriek rang on the rocks and died out laughter like along the vale in hurried trebles weak and soon upon her from their skyey haunt fell to their feast the great birds bald and gaunt and gorged on her fair flesh with bloody beak but psyche when her sister was gone forth went out again her wandering way to take and following a stream that led her north after some days she passed the corian lake whereby athena's temple stands and he who traverses the isle from sea to sea may by the plain his shortest journey make 
Till on the northern coast arrived she came Upon a city built about a port. The which she knew, soon as she heard the name, Was where her elder sister had her court. To whom, as Eros had commanded her, She now in turn became the messenger Of vengeful punishment that fell not short. For she too, hearing, gan her heart exult, Nor pity felt for Psyche's tears and moans, But fellowed with that other in her fault, Followed her to her fate upon the stones, And from the peak, leaping like her below, The self same way, until the self same woe, Lay dashed to death upon her sister's bones. End of part six. Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com.